Hello everyone, my name is Vess, Art Director at Northwood Studios, and welcome to the official Northwood Studios YouTube channel. It's been a while since our last update, and we want to explain our situation. Recently, we have been thinking of ways to share our progress with you, and we came up with an idea of starting a series of developer logs, or devlogs for short. We want to make each blog interesting, so it won't be a consistent schedule of videos. We are also planning to launch multiple series regarding SCP-SL on this channel, so please consider subscribing to keep yourself up to date. Today we are going to talk about everything that has already been implemented in Mega Patch 2. Without prolonging, let's jump right into it. As many of you know, we've had multiple ongoing issues with the new networking system and the game engine itself. For the last few months, we've been waiting for the Unity team to help us fix our problem. Meanwhile, we've been trying to find a way around this problem. Unfortunately, we haven't managed to achieve satisfying results. For a more detailed explanation on the issue, please check out the video description where you will find a link to one of our Steam announcements. There is, however, a bright side. We are happy to announce that we have recently managed to compile a successful build of our game on an alpha version of Unity. Thus, we are able to resume our work on completing this update. This is good news. However, we can't give a definitive date for the release of Mega Patch Part 2. This is because we haven't tested those builds enough to certainly say there are no more problems. We will try our best to keep you all updated with the progress as time goes on. Each Mega Patch has its main feature. In Mega Patch Part 1, it was the return of SCP-079. Mega Patch Part 2, however, comes with multiple usable SCP items. The first SCP is SCP-018, a throwable ball that accelerates upon hitting surfaces while becoming faster with each bounce, until it eventually explodes out of the facility. Different speeds can induce certain damage. Low speeds can break glass and hurt players. Its maximum speed will destroy doors with the power of the Shy Guy. This is highly random, but a deadly weapon that can do a lot of damage when used effectively. Speaking of lots of damage, we've added something even stronger than flex tape. Introducing SCP-500, the Panacea. There's a huge part of the community that has been waiting for this addition, since we were teasing you with the idea of it for over a year. It's a pill that you can consume to recover all of your health and cancel all negative effects. It also adds a small regeneration effect to your health, lasting a few seconds. When it's used in the right hands, it can give you the chance of tipping the scales in your favor. The next SCP added is SCP-207, Cola Bottles. It's another consumable item which allows you to run much faster. However, it has a huge downside as it slowly drains your health, but it might be worth the damage if you want to quickly run from your enemies. The whole effect can be completely canceled after consuming a pill of the previous mentioned SCP-500. It's also part of the new treatment system, which we will talk about later. The last SCP item we have added is SCP-268, a wearable hat that makes the carrier invisible for a few seconds. The effect is cancelled instantaneously when the invisible player takes any damage or does any interaction such as shooting, opening a door, or elevator. This SCP is reusable, but it has a cooldown time after each use. We are not providing any specific numbers yet, because we want to be certain it is well balanced in its final form, and we want to adjust the parameters depending on the results of our tests. One of our favorite additions are the new lockers. They've been added in multiple shapes and types, I don't think we need to describe each of them. I can, but I won't, so there. I can add though, that they strongly relate to the previous additions, since the new lockers were designed as a spawn point for the new SCP items. We've also added a few generic lockers for normal items and weapons. Another feature is the rework of the treatment system, which is related to the previously listed additions. In general, we have nerfed the medkits and they now spawn more often and can be found in wall-mounted lockers scattered around the facility. Medkits are now weaker, as they heal less damage and it takes a few seconds to use them. To counterbalance this downgrade, we have added the previously mentioned SCP-500 and adrenaline shots that can be used almost immediately. There are also painkillers that slowly regenerate your health over time. The most notable changes related to the weapon system is the new Micro HID. We have changed the model and the mechanics, but we will let you discover how it works when it comes out. We've also added a lot of tiny details that were always missing. Let me quickly list them. Gun attachments are now visible on dropped items. Even ammo counters show the actual number of rounds left in the magazine. P90's parameters were buffed, so it's now closer to the Epsilon 11 standard rifle in terms of potential damage. Class Ds and scientists don't spawn with ammunition anymore, 
so finding a pistol won't always end up with a death to all representatives of the opposite team. Added more ammunition scattered around the facility. Changed all Epsilon 11 standard rifle scopes, so hollow sights now have a cooler effect. Red dot sights have turned into blue dot sights. Night vision scope actually works in darkness. Sniper scope gives even better zoom, but works worse in poor lighting. We have also added a lot of gameplay improvements and fixed multiple backend systems. So now, everything should be much more reliable. We don't want to list all of the changes yet, and all I can say is there are a number of features related to the guns and the CASI system. That's pretty much everything in that update. It may not sound like much, especially if we compare it to the waiting time, but we do believe in your understanding of what happened. The real feature of Make Patch 2 is the new backend system. We got rid of everything that is no longer supported, so we can now play a safer, more reliable game. Finally, we would like to say thank you to our Patreon supporters, as well as the rest of the community for staying with us and understanding. This game wouldn't be possible without you. If you want to see more devlogs in the future, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and write a comment with your thoughts. We will pick out a handful of questions from the most popular or frequent comments to be answered in the next devlog. Thanks, and have fun!